This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac. Okay, yes. Perfect. Yes, that looks good. Okay. Okay. Chair, mouse, desk, plant, um, audio equipment, scarlet, headphones, speakers, yes. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, John's definitely gonna need to set up. Oh, come on, come on. Don't do this to me now. Don't. Come on. Where's the kid So that was a bit of a reenactment of our whole month. I'm not the one using this PC 24-7. In fact, Jan is. Yeah. Finder is what? Always crash. Man. Yeah, and Premiere is just a, a pain to use. I don't think the money is worth it for us to go from custom PCs to the Apple ecosystem yet. I really want to, but it's, it's not the time for us. Watch the whole video and you guys will get to see why and how our experience has been for the past month. As soon as the Apple Studio set came out, I was so over the moon with it that we decided to get all of it. In fact, we told ourselves, look, this is it. We are going to replace all of our custom PCs with this. Our excitement was so big that we decided to remodel part of the office to make a whole desk set up for it. Eventually though, I, uh, well, it took about a month for us to realize that this isn't as good as we thought. And keep in mind that not only we tested a base model Mac Studio, but we also have pushed an upgraded Max model to its limits. Don't get me wrong though, it's good. It's really good, but not good enough to give up our PCs. But look, in short, here's how our month went. This here's where Jan has been spending his last two weeks on. Prior to that, he of course was spending time on his original setup, but we decided to give that up, mostly because the Mac Studio is so small, so quiet, and great with thermals, and that's been the case ever since we got it. For us, having an editing machine that could deliver the power without thermal throttling issues and fan spinning like crazy is almost like a must. We record and develop our voiceovers directly on a computer and it's nice knowing we don't need to worry about fan noise. It's also been super pleasant knowing that each Thunderbolt port has their own controller, meaning that every single Thunderbolt port in the back has its own 40 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. And so when we connect any sort of peripherals in there, mostly flash drives, SSDs, Thunderbolt 3 raids, we've never experienced any model next with them. Other than this, in terms of bandwidth, it's not really something our audio equipment needed. The increase in bandwidth for these types of devices does not offer any benefits to the signal quality or latency. Plus, within this setup, we find ourselves using a couple of different keyboards, a gaming mouse Jan seems to enjoy, and the trackpad too. Everything works super well together and throughout the whole month we haven't had any weird signal interference, mostly when dealing with Bluetooth devices. If we do the math, as someone that comes from a custom PC, having all these peripherals from the get-go helped us save some money. We all know that the studio comes as it is, with no screen, no peripherals, no nothing. And so if you are looking to build a full Mac desk setup, you might want to think about these things. On our end, because of the type of work we do, we we realistically decided to stick with the Apple Studio display. It's been a lovely experience, it's literally a panel like no other. The myth has been debunked online and we now know for a fact that the LG Ultra Wide 5K display has a completely different panel. This means that we get 600 peak nits of brightness, controllable through the right keyboard, way better contrast on this panel which makes the image look so much better and the ability to have EDR simulate HDR to deliver that extra extra brightness. However, the whole month hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows. Our biggest issue with it is the fact that it's too small at 27 inches. 
Editing content on huge timelines when dealing with video sucks, mostly when it's the monitor we use to color grade footage with. Eventually, Jan got fed up and we rigged this little mobile car to have a second monitor within this setup. Absolutely horrible. It's annoying because we can't even vest and mount the Apple display. I wasn't about to wait 8 to 10 weeks to have a nano texture unit with a vest mount adapter. By the way, I really think that nano texture is a must when working with a lot of light. We like the way it minimizes the glare so we can get the best image quality when working with bright light sources. And as a whole, I mean, I do understand the pricing model. I mean, it's a monitor that literally contains an iPad chip. This allows for it to support center stage, spatial audio, and bring Hey Siri to literally any Mac out there. The build quality has been great throughout our use, the hinge on the tilt is still super buttery smooth, and the whole monitor does not wobble, which Jan very much appreciates. I personally don't mind the thick bezel, Jan on the other hand finds it annoying. He's the one that edits the videos on this so he definitely has a better take on it. The speakers on the other hand, both of us agree on the fact that these are insane, but our money can be justified in that department because for production, we actually enjoy doing some amateur audio engineering work with proper speakers. We like having a better bass reproduction which is not something the display delivers in our opinion and so we know that spending $2,400 twice for the specs we want is not really an alternative worth considering. It's super fun color grading on this which we think this is the only use for this monitor but at 27 inches we think having a couple of 4K ultra wide 32 inch LG monitors could benefit us more. It's a lot more important to work faster and efficiently than being super picky about our color choices. Going with different monitors on our end is not only going to save us time, but also lots of space on this desk. At the moment, things look extremely crowded, mostly because we wanted to add this groove mate stand to bring the display a bit above eye level. Within the month we've had these Apple Studio devices, this was our experience with them when dealing with their hardware capabilities. When it comes to performance though, uh, things were amazing at first but it quickly took a massive turnaround. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't the only one complaining about this which made my experience gain credibility for myself because I thought we were doing something wrong. Look, it has nothing to do with everyday tasks being slow, in fact, the sponsor of this video made sure we did not suffer from that. I finally was able to bring one of my favorite apps, Clean My Mac, to sponsor the channel. It's an app I pretty much have and have had on all my Mac devices in the past few years. It's responsible for taking care of your entire computer when it comes to maintenance, optimization, and security. Essentially, it's a powerful Mac cleaner that takes care of cleaning, speed up, and optimization for your Mac in one single click. At its core, it can get rid of unused files, free up your RAM, get rid of unneeded trash, uninstall different apps you no longer need, and even remove malware from your Mac. This includes a real-time shield against Trojans, data miners, and recent browser hijackers. The coolest thing is that it can also delete tracking cookies so advertisers cannot follow you across the web. I do love the fact that it's extremely user-friendly because it packs up a great UI. Within, my favorite feature to use is Space Lens. This overall allows me to build a detailed map of my storage so I can easily explore my files making it less of a headache to clean. Mac OS tends to generate a bunch of junk files that not only take up a lot of space but also cause the computer to slow down. I suggest you check them out in the link down below and set up a general maintenance scan on your computer. Which we of course did so we knew we were doing everything we could to keep the Mac Studio from running slow. For a whole month, our real world usage has been phenomenal. The unified memory architecture at its core allows the same RAM to be used for both the CPU and the GPU, which is clearly not the case on our custom PC, so simple real-world tasks are a lot faster than any other computer, even for things such as rendering an image on Lightroom. You see, within the Apple design, there's some pipelining between tiles. This is a huge performance win for Apple when it works. So for photography and most graphic design work, any of their Mac Studio models will deliver incredible performance. In fact, this whole month has been absolutely amazing when it comes to using Lightroom, Photoshop, and Illustrator. So I do recommend you get it for those reasons, unless you come from a powerful custom PC already. I think the only valid argument to change to this would be because you want to be within the Apple ecosystem. Yes, it's super fast and snappy, but not enough to go through the whole trouble of selling your custom PC 
losing money on it and getting a Mac Studio. The chances are you might want to get something similar to your custom PC so that might cost you a pretty penny. Again, it does hold up with big machines but not as well as I thought it would. Factors like ecosystem and thermals are definitely the only reason I would transition but the performance degradation we experienced over the past couple of weeks killed it for us. I spent hours trying to figure out why the Mac Studio was all of a sudden acting up and this mostly has to do when editing videos on Premiere Pro. After some extensive research, I finally realized that just because an application is designed for Apple Silicon, that doesn't mean that it is optimized for unified memory. And so even with something like the M1 Ultra, a lot of the time this higher end chip just sits there and does not take advantage of its full power, it's not much of a great ROI. These chips have buffers inside that get overwhelmed pretty quickly with data. This only happens if part of the memory, which is called the tile thread group, is not being taken advantage of by the developers who write these huge programs. So when Premiere throws huge chunks of data, you end up creating traffic within memory channels and the GPU has to wait to render things out. This is why Premiere at first was starting to behave well and eventually it became a mess. On a macro scale though, I understand a lot of people haven't received receive their ultra so it's hard for companies to make these optimizations but it's a lot of power that is not being taken care of it's like having a dog behind the wheel of a gt2 rs on the nurburgring look even the developers of final cut have only recently made some changes to correct bugs on the new n1 chips so for the first time software is not catching up with hardware seems like developers do not know yet how to get the full potential from these new chips i mean even max tech realized that we still get C CPU limitations when dealing with frequencies. In my opinion, ARM for insanely heavy tasks is just not there yet. Not only that, but as someone that likes swapping his SSD drives on his custom PC often, the fact that the Mac Studio doesn't deliver that is a bummer. We also get HDMI 2.0 which is not practical and overall old technology like Bluetooth 5.0 and some of the other chips in there. It's not good for a high-end system you'd wish to keep for 5 to 8 years, I'd rather stick to my custom PC with a dedicated NVIDIA GPU which is still overall way better when it comes to ray tracing. After a month, I know for a fact that the power and efficiency are there, but the boundaries on these chips are yet to be seen. Let's not forget that most of the world has been running on x86 machines for almost 50 years. We can't expect these complex and advanced programs to change from one day to the next. Look, the Mac Studio is absolutely great for everything else, but that's not what this device was built for. I don't even recommend it to 80% of developers, most graphic designers, engineers, and so on. To me, this is Apple testing the waters when it comes to who this device could potentially be for. I'll make a proper PC comparison within the next few weeks to close my case on this, but for now, I think we might have to stick to custom PCs. I'm a bit bummed out, but it is what it is. Jenna and I have to get back to work because we are in fact redoing this entire part of the space. I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.